Oh boy, I'm so glad. So many of you made a lot of money yesterday, making a lot of money off this show. I was watching the chat before we started this morning. Someone said, I, I made $5,000 uh, already from Dogecoin, from this coin, from that. So welcome in on the show. So glad to have you here. On today's show, Ethereum smashes all-time highs, and so does Dogecoin, by the way, exploding. Is it too late to enter the Ethereum race? We'll tell you. We're going to look at some of those charts. Also, Joe Biden, President Biden, takes to the uh, trail yesterday, almost like a campaign trail, announcing huge tax hikes for the wealthy. But will the little guy get screwed? We're going to look at the numbers, and we're going to have also a stimulus update for you today on infrastructure. Um, uh, the, the infrastructure debate has unfolded, and will the Democrats work with Republicans? Is there any reason to work with Republicans at this point? We will analyze. Also, we got to hear from Warren Buffett warning about red-hot inflation. And that's why Berkshire Hathaway is taking a real cautious position right now. So inflation is coming. If your money is in the U.S. dollar, you better be uh, scared. Also, Elon Musk about to host Saturday Night Live um, as Dogecoin reaches a new high to the moon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. David's in the control booth this morning. Good Producer morning, David. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning start to the show. you. I'm going to start the show in about seven minutes or so. Did you... Um, did you buy any uh, Ethereum last night? I did not. I still got to, I have not verified my Weeble account. So I still got to do that first. I'll give you a better one. So I'll give you a better exchange where you can get $1,600 for free. Okay. So here's, this is probably my favorite exchange. And it's, uh, I'm going to show it to you. And you guys, if you, uh, there's a link in the description, but you can go to morninginvest.com slash coin. And uh, here's what you'll get. They they have a they say this on the one page. You get the deponent the deposit bonus, but up to sixteen hundred and ten dollars just for depositing in your account. Um, so they're giving you, and it's actual money. It's not like you know some of these other exchanges give you like uh, credit or whatever. No, it's actual money. Um, so go to morninginvest.com/slash/coin. Uh, that's my favorite exchange. Buy bit um, for for trading crypto. They've been doing a lot of really good stuff over there, and you have to use a VPN, remember. you got to use a VPN. So we also have a VPN. You can go to ipvanish.com and get it, or you can use ExpressVPN, either one. Uh, but they don't let U.S., like a lot of these big exchanges just do not let U.S. Um, US uh, IP addresses. So you've got to, uh, you've got to use an I, a VPN to, to log in. So you sh and you should be able to verify like it should be get you, like get you up and running in like 25 seconds. It's that simple over on Bybit. Joanna Green is here. Michelle Brown. Choi Puerta, I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you so much. Sodraski says Doge. Well, Huber Heights, Jamie Ball. Good to see you this morning. We'll gladly pay my Doge taxes. I love the new interface. Where is Grover, by the way? He was just barking. Running around. Oh, there he's back. Okay. Back on my Snuggie. He's back on my University of Pittsburgh Snuggie. Yeah, Doge is on the rise this morning. Do Doge was 27 cents a week ago. Uh, you know, I'm going to ask you guys. Let me know what you think if I should, uh, this morning, if I should... Uh, buy into Doge again. I, I just made a bunch of money on it. And it stopped me out. So we're going to look at the Doge charts. Maybe I'll do a live buy here on the show. You'll see it's up 36%. It's out already. What's Grover doing now? He's down here chewing. You coming down here now? Okay. Oh, he's grabbed this little yeah, this is great. We grabbed like my my one of my daughter's like little Christmas things, and uh, he's down here chewing on it. Get, come here now, buddy. What are you doing? Come here. Come here. See a tail? Yep. It's not the elf on the shelf, right? No, no, no. That would be bad. It's not the <laughs> elf on the shelf. <laughs> but he he pulled all the cotton out of the thing. 
Yeah, he literally destroyed this thing, and there's like cotton balls everywhere from this thing. And then he went back to bed, and now he's back up again. Yeah, that's what Dizzy does. Been... Dizzy goes and tears up toys, and now we've got cotton balls like all over the house. We'll find them. What's funny is the Comcast guy that was here last night installing the fiber, he had a sweeper, and he ran the vacuum through the hallway and cleaned up all those cotton balls. And it like came up here and like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I just saw these cotton balls. I thought I'd sweep them up while I had my sweeper out. I was like, that's <laughs> rare. A Comcast guy like cleaning your house for you for free. <laughs> yeah, man. They're trying to do everything they can on customer service, I guess. Right. <laughs> well, the, to be fair, this is like a third party company that does this part of it. But they they uh, represent Comcast, but they were really yeah. good guys. Oh, boy, we're going to start the show here in about a minute. $100 of Doge at 54 cents. Uh, Comcast. King C says Comcast sucks. Mench on a bench. Mark Phillips says you have nobody's going to do anything about it. What does that mean? I missed that. Um, so, so this morning I made, I think I made about, here's what I made so far this morning on selling my doge overnight. Well, into today, um, about 12,000 made since yesterday on it. Um, so got to check overall because that was overnight through the so. Grover, you're going to keep chewing that thing through the show. Over. Come here, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's start the show. All right. All right, keep your comments coming in. Make sure you smash that like button this morning. Um, make sure you smash the old like button. All right, let's start the show. On today's show, Ethereum smashes all-time highs. Is it too late to enter this coin? We'll tell you. We're going to look at some charts. Joe Biden announces uh, huge tax hikes for the wealthy, says they all need to pay their fair share. The big guys, but will the little guy get screwed? We're going to look at some of the numbers on this. Um, plus, we're going to have a stimulus update on infrastructure. Warren Buffett weighing in about red hot inflation, and that's why Berkshire Hathaway, his company, is taking a cautious approach to that. And Elon Musk about to host Saturday Night Live as Dogecoin reaches an all time high um, to the moon. Morning Invest starts right now. Welcome to Morning Invest. I'm Clayton Morris. I'm an investor. And on this show, we teach you how to build wealth by turning those short-term profits, like if you're investing in crypto or the stock market or gold, into long-term holds. So we want you to be able to you know, buy performing assets eventually. That's the goal. We are live first thing every morning right here at 9 a.m. Eastern time. David is in the control booth. Uh, had a bit of an internet hiccup. Are you doing okay this morning? Did yes, your I'm Comcast doing great. guy clip a line or something yeah they clipped the CenturyLink line on accident because the, the CenturyLink people didn't even have their line inside the box that it was supposed to be in so it was like just <laughs> a, above the ground like even the lawn guy could have cut it like they're like the lawn guy would like they're surprised because wow. he weed eats right there and it was like right there they showed me where it was <laughs> that's a mistake yeah. yeah so my gigabit is gone but i i have uh Fortunately, I took the, the cable out of the Comcast box and put it directly in my computer and I had internet. Otherwise, I was going to I was trying to figure out how I was going to run the show today from my phone or my iPad. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. Hey, it is tacos today. Michelle Brown says tacos today, everyone. It is tacos. Taco, Taco Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep. Taco Tuesday. And May 4th, you know, may the 4th be with you. You know, it's Star Wars Day. And there's a new oh, Star Wars yeah. show coming out today on uh, Disney Plus, isn't there? There's a new... It's a whole yeah, new Star Wars show. Something like the bad ones or something. It's supposed to be like the, I don't know. It looks, it kind of looks interesting. Yeah. It's like Clone War style, right? I think. Yeah. Um, but it's about yeah. like the, the down and dirty bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. The bad bunch. I think that's what it's called or something like that. 
the bad bunch. Um, hey, let's check the markets this morning. Oh, before, a little point of, uh, we're going to get to the markets here. I want to look at what's going on with Ethereum. We're going to look at Doge. We're going to get to all of it this morning. Um, but I want to, point of uh, point of order, many of you message me. I get private messages from you all the time. You'll send me messages on Facebook, on other places, and you'll say, Clayton, is this you? Is this you? They, 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 and they'll, they'll send me like an example. Here's a screenshot. Clayton, is this you? And what they do is they steal my picture. They steal the name. Look, Morning Invest, the I isn't even capitalized, right? And they put like, thanks for watching, dot, 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 dot. Here's my WhatsApp number. If you want assistance, here's my WhatsApp number. This is not me. These are bots, okay? These are, uh, David, you want to explain what these, these things are? Yeah, so it's funny because we have done so many things. Like, so for instance, we'll take the phrase, thanks for watching, because they'll, they'll, they have these phrases they use. And once we put that into the block list, then they add periods between it. So like everything that we do to fight them, they create something else that does that. And, and so Clayton would have to be probably, I don't know how many bottles of wine you'd have to drink to even use that much, much punctuation, but, um, right. But yeah, so so what happens is these bots post and then other bots come in and post under them so that you uh, it looks like there's a conversation going on. And at the end, somebody's getting help with financial advice and stuff. So Clayton will never, ever, ever ask you for money, for your WhatsApp, for your phone number, for any of that stuff in the chat. So yeah. do not reply to those things. Yeah, here's like Janine, uh, Jeannie Jolie says, yeah, I get messages from scammers too. Just click over the name and you see how many subs they actually have. Most of the time they have zero subscribers. They've created a new bot account or whatever. So just be careful with this stuff. I will never, ever ask you for money. Don't ever do that. Don't ever click on it um, if someone says that to you. And by the way, if you see one of these messages like, I've learned so much from Mr. Janice, da, da, da. And then there'll be like 10 messages will pop up that says, yes, I did too. I learned a lot from Janice. How do I get in touch with Janice? I want to learn. It's all a scam. It's all a bot scam. Um, YouTube has to fix this. I think Facebook has done a pretty good job of this stuff, of, of fixing some of that stuff, right? Am I right about that? Or uh, wrong? Not so. It's it's hit and miss because they what they'll do there is they actually go and they they add friends as you, so you still get it, um, but it's just it's not as bad. Yeah. Yeah, so just be careful about it. I'm never going to ask you for a WhatsApp message or anything. I do have a Telegram account for the show, for channel, for the channel. Um, so I'll have a link to that in the show description today um, as well after the show. So you guys can, and, many of you took advantage of that. And just so you guys know what they're doing, because Mark Phillips is asking, what are they doing? It's they're They're getting people to message them and then they try to get you to send them money uh, to go get like a, a gift card or something and send them money. Um, and yeah, they just scam you out of money. Yeah. Lady Drew Boger, Boger says, yeah, thank you for this information. I've been receiving this fraudulent text, so ignore it. It is not me. I will never do that. Don't worry about it. Um, so just want to protect you guys. So if you see that stuff, you don't need to send me a message and say, Clayton, is this you? That is not me. So if anything looks like this in our chat, you can go ahead and click and report it if you'd like. Okay. Yes, definitely report as much as you guys can. Yeah, any of this spam you want to, you can, uh, you can absolutely do. Um, so anyway. Um, who's calling me from Gulfport, Mississippi right now? D it don't is you know not me. I'm don't on the you West know I'm Coast. Show? Gulfport, Mississippi. Come on, man. Okay, let's check the markets this morning. Boy, it's crazy time. Let's check first. Let's look at it, um, Bitcoin this morning. Uh, dropping a little bit here. Um, uh, still, still, you know, pretty, pretty consistent, but it is dropping a little bit down about 4%. Uh, but the real story of the morning is, is, uh, is, is Ethereum. Um, Ethereum is just exploding. Um, so let me pull up the Ethereum chart here. Let me see. Yeah, here's Ethereum. So take a look at Ethereum. 3,400 right now is, uh, is Ethereum. Oh, got to get these things wrong here. Okay. Over on the old laptop. Are you able to see that or am I wrong? Okay. So you're... Uh, bringing in this. There, yeah. there we go. There we go. Yeah. So Ethereum 34. I mean, oh, you know, this it broke out about to 3,400 earlier this morning. Um, a lot of people thinking that this thing is going to hit, um, you know, upwards of 5,000 could be this week, by the way. Um, uh, let's see, where's that article here? Um, yeah. One financial advisor says that we could see this by 5,000 by this week. This week, I mean, look at this. Ethereum continued its record on run on Monday, once again hitting an all-time high of 3,200. 
Nigel Green, the CEO and founder of DeVere Group, says Ethereum's time has come, and the digital currency is well positioned to increase its market share. Ether is one of the main beneficiaries of the wider explosion in the cryptocurrency market, he said. The boom over recent months has been fueled by soaring interest from major institutional investors and growing recognition that borderless digital currencies are the future of money. This momentum is likely to build further in the near term, and I believe Ether will hit $5,000 within seven days. So, you know, how many of you guys, I've been seeing it, numbers of 4,000, um, you know, easily. Um, so uh, I, are you in, are you in it yet or not? You haven't taken the plunge yet, David, right? You're still. Yep. I don't have a way to buy Ethereum yet. Okay. That I'm well, aware of. Well, if you go into, uh, again, go to morninginvest.com slash coin. You got to try buy a bit. You'll get $1,600 for free for signing up. Um, again, morninginvest.com slash coin. Got to check them out. Um, because, do I have that up here on the screen? Here's And here's some of their other rewards too when you sign up. $1,610 when you sign up for Bybit for new users and you depo make a deposit. Um, and it's real money too. It's not like, you know, here's what the Bybit interface looks like. Really, really nice. Um, really love this platform. Um, one of the largest exchanges in the world. You need a VPN though. Remember, you need a VPN to sign up. So make sure you've got a VPN with a US, uh, because they don't accept U UP, uh, US IP addresses. So you need to use a, a, an IP address that's non-US. Like I sign into um, I sign into London, basically, when I use ExpressVPN or IP Vanish. So you can use any of those. We have links below in the description so you can check that out. Wow, who's just said I tripled my inv That was uh, Ian Ewing. Nice. Nice. Um, so then, yeah, Lisa oh, said yeah. her PayPal account got suspended for questionable transactions after buying Ethereum. Well, it's crazy because PayPal is all in on crypto, and you know, the relationship now. I mean, what you're seeing right now that like the relationship between all of these major institutions. This morning, another big, you know, breaking news on this is that Sotheby's is now going to uh, uh, is now going to allow um, is is now going to allow. Tr uh, Coinbase, so you can buy art. So they're the very first thing that they're doing now. Um, okay, let's see, this is the wrong article. You can take me full. Wish there was a way I could do that. Yeah, there we go. Um, so one of the things that Sotheby's is doing is allowing Coinbase. So you can use Coinbase now to buy art. So this is another major move into cryptocurrency from some of these big institutions. And the very first piece of artwork they're doing is uh, Banksy, the new Banksy painting. Um, and uh, you're going to be able to use it and buy with crypto. Um, let's see let's, if I can find this article, Banksy, uh, Banksy Sotheby's. Um, and this auction is happening. Um, this, let's see here, it's the woman. Yeah, here it is. Sotheby's will now accept cryptocurrency starting with this auction for if you guys can sorry about that. Can you see this? I am I hate to keep asking you to switch switch the uh to my screen. This one? Maybe I just I just need to do this directly. Otherwise. So Sotheby's will now accept cryptocurrency starting with an auction for Banksy's love is in the air. So you'll be able to use Bitcoin and Ether via Coinbase in exchange for the art. Um, it, the, the company says it's going to expand our client base. Folks, what you're seeing here is, I'm telling you, it's not going to be very long before a lot of, I mean, the major, a, a lot of the major title companies and mortgage companies, are, they're going to start saying, we're going to accept Bitcoin. We're going to accept cryptocurrency for payment, for buying a house. or buying, I mean, look, Tesla's already doing it for cars. So this is happening. Um, this is already coming together. This is already happening. Um, make no mistake about it. Um, you know, but look at look at Ethereum today, thirty four six sixty nine, um, three four thirty four hundred sixty nine dollars, up ten percent, up ten percent. Um, pretty crazy. Um. That's amazing. 
people saying I, I tripled my I tri- tripled my profit from Grover Coin. Thank you, Grover. <laughs> no, there's no Grover Coin just yet. We need to start a Grover Coin though. I think you know we need to get it up there because let's look at Doge Coin this morning. Doge. All right. So where's my Doge? Here's Doge. That's too many tabs open here. All right. Let's get Doge up here. Okay. So Doge is now at 53 cents. So here's what happened a little while ago. Let me show you this drama that unfolded a little while ago on its run up to 50 to 51. So here is, um, take a look at this. This is me doing a trade here on, and I recorded this just a few minutes ago. So you can see where I had, I had stop losses set at the 50 range. Zoom in on this a little bit. Um, So I had stock, I, you know, Doge is sitting there at about 50. Uh, so I set a stop loss. I had a stop loss right under that about 50 cents and 662. 50 cents uh, and it hit 51. So then I, what I did is I canceled out. I canceled out this stop loss because it just kept running up. So I had a stop loss there, which I already locked in profits at this level. I said, okay, I, you know, I think a lot of people were going to take profits at the 50 cent mark. Uh, that's exactly what happened. So a lot of people I thought were going to come in here and take some some nice profits once it hit 50. And it looks like that's what was starting to happen. But I was watching it still going up. 51, 51. Okay, let me play around with this a little bit. So then I stepped in and I'm gonna, I decided I'm going to set a new stop loss right here. See if you can see the cursor there. So I canceled out the other, other stop loss. Um, and it's very easy to do. Just click on the little X or down in your list, your orders list, and just cancel it out. And so cancel order. And I moved it up so I could lock in more profits, go from 50 to 51 cents. So I just canceled that out, boom, and just set a new stop loss a little bit higher um, and uh, move this thing up. And that's what I did. And then I said it's about 51, 51 and a half or so. And then I stopped out on it. So if you want to take a look at my uh, computer screen now, this is This is my, this is where we are right now. So this is Doge right now hovering around 52, 52, 52 cents. Um, And look, there's a lot of news coming out this week on Doge. That's why I'm bringing it to your attention right now because, and if you look at, look at Google trends right now, the top trending searches in the world, Bill Gates getting a divorce from Melinda Gates, splitting up after 27 years. Dogecoin is the second hottest trending topic in the world. Slim Jim tweeting about it. Um, you know, Dogecoin and Ethereum climbing to record highs. And even it even beats Ethereum on searches. Ethereum price, 5000 could hit $5,000. Um, uh, big news this week, though, because you have, um, uh, what's his name, is going to be, where are my articles today? I'm all over the place. I apologize. Elon Musk is going to be on Saturday Night Live. And... He is going to be tweeting or talking about Dogecoin on Saturday Night Live. So if you don't think that this is going to even go higher um, than where we are right now, I think you're wrong. So I think now it's a question of like, what, what is a good entry point to get back into Doge? Like if you want to make some, you want to jump on some profits here. Um, it's at 53 right now. And I said, maybe I even do like a live trade here on the show. What do you guys think? you guys think should I sorry about that hit the wrong one there yeah it's just a black screen now Hmm. there it goes what happened it's restream thing I think I I like even though it's smaller I think I better go back to the uh, the dongle way of doing it because then I have to pester you to keep taking <laughs> take it full or this and that um but uh so i was saying you know maybe i'll do a live trade here on the show um and take the plunge on this so if you guys want let me know in the chat um should you want to see a live trade what do you guys think should i and i made a pretty good profits on this like i said i made about i have to look at the total number but i think around twelve thousand on dogecoin uh, overnight 
So I'm going to reinvest into it now, and we'll just see how this goes here on the show. I can show you how to do this. So Dean Thomas saying, yes, yes, do it. All right, so it'll be, this might be painful. Kate Bedrowski bought in at 28. Have you set stop losses, Katie? Way to go. Way Somebody to go. did ask if you can set stop losses on uh, Weeble. Is that possible? Uh, yeah, you can set stop losses over there. Um, but I don't do crypto really on, on there. I do crypto on Bybit um, and, and, um, and also Binance. Those are my two. Those are the two that I've really been using. Uh, I just, I like the speed. I like the interface um, on these. It gives me more options. Plus I have access to way better coins as well. Um, so yeah. Anyway, all right, we'll get back to that. I'm going to do a live trade here in a few minutes, but we've got other news to get to. I want to get to this, which is President Biden on tour promoting his American Families Plan and his infrastructure plan. He kicked off his tour on Monday in Virginia, where he reiterated his idea of increasing taxes on corporations and wealthy Americans to pay for all of it. Um, so let's listen to the president. This was uh, this was yesterday on he was down there on tour. Um, listening uh, for the first time to push this big agenda. I'm discussing an exclusive interview. Alan Folks, trickle-down economies, economics has never worked. For too long, we've had an economy that gives every break in the world to the folks who need it the least. It's time to grow the economy from the bottom up and the middle out. We can choose to give hard-working families a break, a tax break, in effect. We can choose to invest in our students. We can choose an economy that rewards work, not just wealth, and that chooses the choice I'm making. And the vast majority of American people's support is let's give people a shot. Give it even half a chance. The American people have never, ever, ever let their country down. Imagine if we give them a full chance. Imagine what would mean for them and their families and for our country. We're the United States of America. There's nothing, nothing we've been unable to do when we do it together. So let's get together. Let's get this done. Because the truth of the matter is that we can do this and grow the economy. I won't, I won't go on all the other statistics, but the plan is estimated to grow the economy another trillion dollars. This will grow the economy. Everybody will be better off. Here's what the American Family Plan doesn't do. It doesn't add a single penny to our deficit. It's paid for by making sure corporate America and the wealthiest 1% just pay their fair share. I come from the corporate capital of the world. More corporations are incorporated in the state of Delaware than all the rest of the nation combined. And I'm not anti-corporate, but it's about time they start paying their fair share. So what does that mean, you know? He, we'll get into that in a second. Like, what does it mean to, to pay your fair share? But he goes on to say, you know, I, I, I think it's about time we started giving tax breaks and tax benefits to working class families and middle class families instead of just the very wealthy, um, the president said. He also continued to use the phrase fair share throughout the speech, basically saying, look, it's just going to be corporate America that's going to pay for this. Um, but as we wrote in the newsletter this morning, it ignores two fundamental truths. Number one, fair is not an objective word. Like most middle class Americans have their savings and their retirement accounts invested in the stock market. So they would be affected by this, the higher corporate taxes, indirectly. And the economy is an interrelated system. They're, you know, they're not separate things. They're not like these separate little pods that are just in a vacuum. Sep you know, over here, over there, over there. It's all connected. We can't just pretend that, you know, that doing something to one group doesn't affect the others. But something has to be done to increase these rev revenue to, for all this government borrowing. And, you know, the U.S. plans to borrow nearly $1.3 trillion over the next two quarters. Um, borrowing for the current quarter is nearly five times what is expected before the president's $1.9 trillion relief bill. That puts federal debt on track to reach 108% of gross domestic product, which is the highest level of government since uh, debt since World War II. So I'm not sure about this fair thing altogether. I mean, what do you guys think in the chat about, you know, is it fair? Do they need to be paying their fair share, what does fair mean? You know, is it fair to put this debt on the next generation? Is it fair to borrow your way out of a slump? Is it fair to leave crumbling infrastructure to our kids to, to pick up and, you know, clean up and fix? Um, you know, these are all like really tricky questions and, and nothing, it has, I don't know, it doesn't really have anything to do with fairness in, in, my, in my opinion. Um, you know, 
like uh, Franklin's Valentine says workers aren't paid commensurate to the wealth they generate for corporations. I think that's a great point. You know, look, well, we just saw this with Amazon, right? You have Amazon with tripling its profits and yet can't pay or can't allow their workers to unionize. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I don't think that it's, I, I don't think that that's fair. And I think a lot of these companies, of course, uh, the larger companies put these, you know, monies in offshore accounts. They've got, they've set up headquarters in Ireland and other places and small businesses don't get to do that. But it is a question as to whether or not, you know, people were going to end up paying more, you know, indirectly by being taxed and that goes into, you know, their 401k plans and things like that and how that will affect them. Um, so lower corporate earnings, maybe less revenue, less profits, less value in the stock market. We're already seeing stocks kind of just sizzling down today a little bit as crypto runs wild. But other investors saying, you know what? Tech investor Alan uh, Patrikoff says, I'm not worried about these capital gains taxes at all. Because, and if you're looking at, um, if you're looking at you know, futures this morning, it looks fine. Like the markets are doing just fine this morning on the heels of the president's tax the discussion yesterday. Markets are like, we'll be able to handle this, which just goes to show you if they're just sitting there fine, stuff's trading fine this morning. And Alan Patrikoff says, I'm not worried about these capital gains taxes. It's going to be, it's going to be fine. It's now to discuss in an exclusive interview, Alan Patrikoff, chairman of Greycroft and co-founder of Primetime Partners. Uh, Alan, very good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, Thank you. What, what, wanted to obviously kick off on the, these Verizon assets and their sale to Apollo. Two, two parts of the question. Do you think it's a good deal? And, and why? I just felt they needed to rationalize their, what they're buying. Sorry. And, and, and I mean, that's been on a tear in, in, in recent decades, not just. So, and I, as you may know, I'm a big supporter of the uh, change in the tax rates. I think that uh, capital gains have been vastly overstated. And by the way, I'd be, I'm a uh, number one victim of a raise in capital gains rates because that's what I invest in companies for to make capital gains. But I think that uh, we're seeing a kind of uh, uh, topsy turvy shift in uh, government philosophy, which is uh, the president wants to was saying that people who work hard and earn money are entitled to make uh, to do equal to what people are who are making money with their uh, putting their capital to work the original purpose of capital gains was to give an incentive to put money to work and uh it was because uh it was just to bring some differential between it i think we're at a stage now where the country needs to have more uh income I believe that government has done a good job. I mean, look at COVID. If without government and the and the uh, vaccines, uh, it never would have happened independently. Uh, I think they are mobilizing infrastructure. They want to mobilize health. They want to do a lot of things that are very constructive for all of us. And it takes. It's going to take more money, and the people at the top uh, can afford it. I interesting things. I have a lot of friends who are all in this bracket that are going to get hit. And there are very few people who uh, who are feeling, you know, they've been cheated or hurt or taken advantage of. They all feel that there's some uh, need to to uh, for to improve this situation of income disparity. And to if capital gains is one of the issues, I'm not saying the rates that they picked are the right the right there should maybe there should be a differential maybe there should be some incentive for holding longer uh, but it's it's these things are set by government policy and the government is now taking an attitude that uh, investing capital at the moment okay. is less important than rewarding people who uh, have been disadvantaged and uh, i i think it's a uh, we're that's the period we're going into now um, you know will it change again possibly uh but right now I think re, uh, uh, removing this, not removing, but uh, eliminating, making the differential smaller, uh, I think is, an, uh, is, a, is a constructive move. So income inequality. He's talking to all his billionaire friends and they're all saying the same thing. Yeah, it's out of control. So we'll see. We'll talk stimulus in just a second on the infrastructure side of things. Uh, but first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Babbel. Uh, because right now is a great time to take on a new project and learn a second language. You know, 
I don't think for a lot of us, like learning a second language in high school or college was a high point. <laughs> like I did not do very well with my German in, uh, in high school or junior high. It was not good. Well, now thanks to Babbel, the number one selling language learning app, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Just for a few minutes a day, little bite-sized language lessons you can actually use in the real world. Very, very easy. Like you're waiting in line at the you know Starbucks or sitting down to have a coffee. 15-minute lessons it makes it perfect for a way to learn a language on the go. And Babbel designs their courses with practical real-world conversations in mind, things you'll get used to in everyday life. Um, and uh, you, know, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation as well. So it's hearing you. And like, no, they'll, they'll correct you. Make sure you're saying it correctly. Like, tutu bai, tushkulpa. Um, anyway, right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months total for just the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code INVEST. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code INVEST, for an extra three months for free. Babbel, language for life. And I'm look, so many people right now are taking, <laughs> going to be traveling. David, are you going to be traveling at all anytime soon? And if so, like that's the thing about wanting to learn a new language because people have been so cooped up for a year, they just cannot wait to get out. Yeah, no, if I, I'm going to be traveling, but it's going to be all local driving within driving distance. All U.S. based. Yeah. yeah. You know, I want to go. For now. I want to do some European traveling. I want to get out. I want to get out, travel. <laughs> get out. Speak, you know, speak some French. Learn some French. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, learn a romance language. So our thanks to Babbel. All right, let's talk about stimulus now uh, because tax refunds. We've got tax refund information. Um, and Rich Allen, a well, longtime viewer of our show. Rich, I hope you're doing well. Uh, he sends me some info from time to time. And I saw this story, and I was one step ahead of you. I was planning to talk about it on the show today because those tax refunds, the $10,200 unemployment benefits are starting to hit in May. So they're coming out now. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? The American Rescue Plan, which President Biden signed uh, back in March, waived the federal tax of up to $10,200 in those unemployment benefits per person. Well, the IRS is going to start issuing refunds to eligible taxpayers starting in May. Um, so right now, you might even start seeing it here. How many people watching right now have started seeing this already? So this applies to workers who filed a tax return before the COVID relief bill became law, that $1.9 trillion version. So the agency says they were going to fund this in two different phases. Payments will continue into the summer, and they should wrap up by then. So tax refunds on 2020 unemployment benefits are slated to start this month. But some taxpayers, namely single filers, will actually get the money sooner than others. So the single filers, if you're watching, probably get it sooner. And I know you're probably saying, wait, finally, I'm not the one that gets shafted here. Usually it's the single filers, the single people who end up having to not get the benefits. But you guys will get the, the refunds first. Um, and then it may be summertime before other groups such as married couples or those with really complex tax returns are going to get their $10,200 refunds, according to the IRS. So uh, that's good news there. Now, meanwhile, on stimulus on the infrastructure side, we have a reality check for Democrats this morning because, look, we've had a number of weeks now of Democrats out there talking about, you know, we're going to have to increase, we're going to have to get rid of the Trump tax cuts. We're, get, we're going to do all this massive infrastructure around the environment and making sure the climate is front and center, electric vehicles, all of that. So right now, Democrats and Republicans are too far apart for there to be any kind of a deal struck between these two guys. Republicans are calling for $600 billion in hard infrastructure. They don't want, and they're a hard no, by the way, on unraveling any of the 2017 tax cuts. They're going to push back big on the green policies. Um that the Biden administration wants. Uh, Democrats are demanding green policies. They want $900 billion in hard infrastructure. So they keep saying that. We want hard infrastructure. Plus, they want another um, $1.6 trillion in other spending. And of course, they want to hike the corporate tax rate. This is too big a gap to make up between these two parties right now. There's no way. Uh, and Democrats have spent the last three weeks telling reporters and anyone who listened that their plan is popular and they're right about that because, as you know, even the president out there taking to the taking to the sort of campaign trail on all of this, the numbers on it are very, very popular. So overwhelming support from the American people right now on this next round of stimulus. And if Republicans want to stand in the way of this hugely popular initiative, go ahead and let them, basically. You guys want to stand in the way in this? Go, fine. 
it's the right thing to do right now. The American jobs plan and the American family plan. I mean, I'll, that's my opinion. I think that these are transformative in many ways. And I think they're going to be like a once in a generation initiative. We're not going to see something like this for another 20, 30 years, if possible. Um, it could lift millions of people out of poverty. Um, it would address spir spiraling economic inequality right now that could really unhinge American society. We're seeing all of these like record profits on Wall Street. But then Main Street is just getting crushed. You know, these would have huge impact on serious racial and social problems across the country. So I think there's plenty of move here, but I just don't think at this point Democrats. I mean, let me know in the chat. Do you think Democrats should wait for Republicans on this? I mean, what's the incentive? Why, why would they want to? What's the, what's the point of trying to work with Republicans on a bipartisan bill and going small on this? I, I don't know. Theater. Theater. Mark Phillips, be careful, Clayton. You're talking about too much positive stuff for us. Hey, it is positive. You know, I, again, I think it is. I think it's transformative. And I, Todd Williams says, heck no. Why wait on anything? Linda Edwards says, yeah. I, I, or Mark Phillips, only about 30 to 40 years behind the times and in infrastructure. Yeah, that's, is that it? KT, Republicans are never satisfied. Dems just go for it. No point in waiting, Phil D says. Tired of tax credits, they favor the wealthy. If a person doesn't make enough, they get nothing. So again, it's another way to, to feed the rich. Well, when they find an excuse not to pass it, who do you think they're going to blame? That's the thing. You know, they'll, so we couldn't, we, you know, we tried to work with Republicans. They didn't want to pay. And so we, we, put, we put this on the floor. They didn't vote for it. Therefore, we have no infrastructure bill. I mean, there's no way they're not passing the next stimulus. There's no way. It's going to happen. And they're going to have to go at it alone. And they're going to have to do it with, with or without Republicans. If they want to get on board with it, great. But this re they're moving in reconciliation. Make no mistake about it. Like the reconciliation process is what's unfolding, without a doubt. Um, I mean, yeah, look at lumber prices. Robin says, right now, it's only going to cost more if you wait. Look at lumber prices. Yeah, this morning, lumber prices are just up skyrocketing again. Um, lumber prices this morning, like off the charts. Um, again, I don't know how you, I don't know how you reconcile this. We, we have a, you know, housing crisis. We have a housing crisis in the United States. We can't even build them fast enough. And now home prices are also going up. I'm going to take my screen here. Lumber prices breaking new records. This is this morning, the wall street journal sawmill owners poised to reap big profits while home buyers, which, which screen are you wanting? Oh, my laptop. It's not in here. Oh, it's just again? blank. You should still be plugged into the dongle. You should still be able to, because you didn't unplug that, right? Um, I did unplug the dongle. Let me do that. Dongle. Sorry, let me just grab my dongle. <laughs> Get my dongle plugged back in. Got to make sure you got the dongle. Thanks, Apple. So here we go, dongle. Let's go to dongle town. Yeah, see, it shrinks it all down. I hate that after I put it, but oh well. To do it. So lumber prices breaking new records, adding heat to home prices. Sawmill owners will reap huge profits, while home buyers, renters will bear the brunt of rising wood costs. Sky, I mean, look at these prices. Unbelievable. I saw a funny meme the other day. I, was I telling you this? I think I was telling you. Look at this lumber futures. Someone, someone posted on Instagram, said, I, I just passed a billionaire on the highway, and it was a photo of a guy with a whole bunch of two-by-fours in a, in, a, <laughs> uh, in a flatbed driving by. I mean, these, this is crazy. $1,500. So all this, of course, is going to come back to you. Um, and home prices are already exploding. $1,500 per thousand board feet. 
record. This is uh, this is going to be uh, so on spot prices for two by fours. Other wood products have also jumped to fresh highs. Already passed the April record of twelve hundred and ninety dollars. Unbelievable. So let's talk Warren Buffett this morning. So Warren Buffett um, is nervous. Warren Buffett is nervous about inflation. He hit investors with a so a bunch of truth over the weekend. He talked about crypto. We talked about that a bit. He talked about uh, he talked about retail traders and Robinhood, etc. Um, but he also talked about inflation, and he said everyone should be worried about this rising red hot inflation in the economy. Um, you know, he says basically that when you have I mean, first of all, when Buffett speaks, investors listen. So that's maybe why we're seeing some just kind of copacetic attitude on Wall Street today. So they said, you know, they're all paying attention to his shareholder meeting when he admitted that he thinks the economy is in overdrive right now. And he puts that down to faster than expected recovery. Like we're exploding. There's all this demand. Look at Avis this morning. Do you remember Hertz rental car? Like had filed for bankruptcy last year because they had all these rental cars sitting there. They didn't know what to do with them. Avis, Avis was in trouble. Avis stock exploding today. Like if you if you bet on Avis popping back in a short amount of time, like in a month's amount of time, there's such huge demand for rental cars right now and they don't have enough of them. And by the way, Avis, Avis sells used cars and there's an incredible demand for used cars right now. So Avis's stock is through the roof. Who would have thought? So he said, you know, we have this faster than expected post-pandemic recovery and we're seeing it. And he said the U.S. Central Bank and the government's massive support measures are also adding to this. He said, combine that with these ultra-low interest rates that aren't moving, and right now you get a population that has way more money in their pockets and a willingness to pay higher prices for goods and services. They're willing to, I'm sure you're seeing this, David, like, like electronic stuff. I mean, people are just willing to like throw a few extra hundred dollars at things whether it's buying the new PlayStation 5 and they're willing to just go on eBay and doing it because they can't find it anywhere else. You know, I mean. Yeah, I still I still would like to get one of those, but can't find them anywhere. Yeah, th things are sold out everywhere. I mean, literally, th they just can't keep up with demand right now. Um, cars are selling like crazy. Homes are selling like crazy. Everything is overinflated right now. So, like, if you're going to take your money out of something, where are you going to put it? Like everything is exploding. Is everything overvalued? You're going to put it in Dogecoin? So Buffett says right now, oh, this is going to lead to one thing, one thing only, sky high inflation. So get ready, folks. Again, I'm telling you, when you hear this from a number of big thinkers who are seeing this coming and are already moving their money around on purpose, they've been through it before. They're looking at the indicators. Buffett, excuse me, admitted that internally at Berkshire Hathaway, they have number of analyses pointing to sky high inflation coming. So what does that mean for you? You know, the reason you watch this show is so you can make money, keep more of your own money, and not be ripped off by Wall Street scoundrels. So, you know, not having your money in the U.S. dollar for one thing. You know, again, if your future and wealth is tied to being in the U.S. dollar, you're going to be screwed. It's the bottom line. You know, you've got to start thinking about how we move this money out of U.S. currency, out of the U.S. dollar, out of the U.S. banks, and into alternative assets, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, real estate, gold, as a hedge against this inflation. It's coming. So please don't tell me in a year you didn't know it was coming. I'm telling you now. It's already, it's already unfolding before our eyes, by the way. So, you know, here's gold. I think it's undervalued. 1790 bucks. We've had enough. We're going to have a gold expert on the show tonight. So be sure to set an alert because we're going to have uh, Mark Lichtenfeld on the show. Um, he He's very bullish on gold. And he's not like a, a, a bull. He's not like a gold bull, by the way. Mark, um, you know, he's not been in gold for a while. He's now jumped. He's going crazy into gold right now. Uh, because of what's happening. So would you say he's not a bully on gold? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not a bully on gold. That's bullion. a good pun. Bullion. He likes chicken bullion. 
I do too. I do too. Um, my son was feeling sick yesterday and my wife made some chicken bouillon for him and uh, she put some in a, in a, in a, in the water dish for Grover and, uh, Ooh. and he loved it. He lapped it up. So yeah. Dizzy has an allergy to chicken, so we can't do stuff like that for him. Mm. He loved it. So gold up, you know, again, $1,789 an ounce right now. And many experts believe this is heading over 2000. Look at silver, $26. They kind of move in tandem. Look at those charts. You know, they always kind of move together. So, again, the price of things going up, whether it's, you know, whether it's lumber, whether it's this, lumber prices breaking new records, um, whether it's home prices breaking new records, gas prices, the cost to go out and, uh, you know. Hey, Patrick says, shout out to Morris. Uh, Morris Investments gave me great advice. Good. Um, all this stuff is going up, so just be careful. Be careful. Um, let's take a look at uh, some of these other markets right now. I want to. I'm going to do a trade here, but I want to tell you first. We're going to do a trade here on Dogecoin because Doge is uh, going crazy this morning, um, just breaking all time highs. And a lot of this news, uh, you know, because of what Elon Musk is going to be doing. I'm telling you, he. If you don't think that this is going to matter this weekend, when he hosts Saturday Night Live. Dogecoin braced for an Elon Musk bombshell this week as its price suddenly bounces back. Dogecoin um, price nudging all-time highs of just over 40 cents per Doge. But guess what? By the time this article was published this morning, it's already up higher than that. It's already up to 50 cents. That's how quickly this stuff is moving. Up 50% this past week, making the combined meme-based currency worth about $50 billion. To put that in perspective, just let me put that in perspective for you. Dogecoin is now worth more than Twitter. Dogecoin is now worth more than Ford Motor Company. <laughs> A meme. Yeah. A meme coin is worth more than Ford. And what's funny is, like, I own Ford stock and Ford earnings coming out today, by the way. I think it's going to be... They, you know, they've done really well. So, you know, we're going to see Ford earnings today. There's that chip shortage. Everyone, all manufacturers are worried about that chip shortage. Ford's going to be, everyone's dealing with this chip shortage. Even Apple admitted they're going to have to deal with this chip shortage because of the supply chain disruption. So we'll see that in some of the stock. We're also going to see General Motors. But think about it. Ford is like, I don't know, $6 a share, $7 a share, something like that. Dogecoin at 50 cents is worth more of a, as a company than, uh, than Ford. Dogecoin is a coin, excuse me. $50 billion. Um, and Elon Musk this weekend is going to be hosting Saturday Night Live, and he is expected to, he's, he's admitted that there will be a Dogecoin skit in there. He's going to be talking about Dogecoin. So right after this break, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and do a live trade here. I'm going to see if you guys... Just smash that like button. If we can get how many people? We have five thousand people watching or so. Smash! I want five thousand likes. If you do that, I will go in right now. I'll do a live trade and I will buy. I'll buy. I'm gonna buy like twenty thousand dollars worth of Dogecoin right now. So fingers crossed, I don't screw myself. But I'll do this live right here. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Netsuite. If you're still running your business on Quick QuickBooks. You need to get your head examined. I mean, more like quicksand. The bigger your company grows, the faster you sink with all that outdated software that just can't keep up. That is, that is, you know, QuickBooks. So NetSuite, that's where NetSuite comes in. I mean, you don't have time to spend dealing with the manual processes, multiple systems, delays, scrambling to get the numbers you need. It's all time that you could spend doing other more productive things. So NetSuite by Oracle is the scalable solution to run all of your key back office operations, no matter how big your company grows. That's right. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, inventory, your HR, e-commerce, more, everything you need, all right there in one place. NetSuite helps you automate your key business processes and close your books in a fraction of the time. Think days, not weeks. In fact, 93% of surveyed organizations increased visibility and control over their business since making the switch from QuickBooks to NetSuite. 
So right now, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program. This is pretty awesome. Only for those ready to graduate from QuickBooks. Head to netsuite.com slash morninginvest. It's right there on your screen. netsuite.com slash morninginvest. That's special financing for you graduates at netsuite.com slash morninginvest. netsuite.com slash morninginvest. Move away from QuickBooks. Move into the future. Our thanks to NetSuite. All right, so let's take a look at, uh, you guys ready to do some trading here? I'm trying to convince David to, to, to move on this, so let's see what's going on over here. Yeah, I don't know how, like, I, I don't know how I could move on it if I don't have access to buy it yet, like. Holy smokes, if I would have done this about 10 minutes ago, I would already be up. It's at, so, so take a look. So here we are, it's already at 57 cents, Dogecoin. All right, folks, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to wait for a little retest moment here in which we might actually be in right now. So I'm on a three minute chart. So what I'm going to do is, again, I made some pretty good money overnight with this and uh, into the morning before the show started. So made some good profits, about 12,000. That's about half of what I made. So about 24,000 roughly. Um, so I'm going to take that, those profits, and I'm going to reinvest some of it right now into Doge. At 57 so it's hovering at around 57 and let me pull this up here okay so maybe I should um all right what do you think so what I'm gonna do is go to the market option here do market price um, let's see I'm going to should I bet it all Bet it all. Go big right, or go I'm, home. All right, that's, I'm putting, that's what I always say. And stay in as long as you can. That's what I always say. <laughs> that's what you always say. Exactly. <laughs> like you didn't do with Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. All right. So 57. All right. I'm going to keep my eye on here. So just wait for it to drop a little bit here. In this. this might be in a bit of a retest moment. Uh, I'm going to take the profits I made. Now it's going out of 56. Let's just see here. I'm going to, I want to go to a one minute chart. Oh, this is kind of playing with fire a little bit here, but look at this over the past few hours. Let's run up here. I had a little bit of a, see if I could have jumped in here, 56 and run it up. So look, it's down here. Okay. 56. So I'm watching that. By the way, did you guys see the news on, um, um, uh, was it Disaster Girl? Do you know Disaster Girl? The, um, I, I'm not familiar. So here's Disaster Girl. This is a famous oh, yeah, yeah, meme, yeah. meme, right? Yeah. Um, so that's Disaster Girl. This photo was taken back in 2007. Um, yesterday, as an NFT, as a non-fungible token, this sold for $500,000. That's how much the girl from the famous disaster meme sold her own photo for as an NFT. She is now 21 years old and in school. When, she, when it, this photo was taken, her father took this photo. She was four years old. So as a non-fungible token, you know, gives a blockchain owner the rights to a digital asset. Disaster Girl now sold this photo as a digital asset. She's going to use it to pay off her student loans. Isn't that sad, though? She gets $500,000, and, like, that's what she's going to use it for is to pay off student loans. <laughs> that just goes to show you how screwed America is. Disaster Girl. All right, so let me go back to Doge. Okay, here we go. Here's the little breakout I was hoping for. All right, all right, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. Let's go. Okay, all right, I just bought $24,000 of Doge. What I'll do is, I'm just to be safe, I'm going to set a stop limit here just under this most recent. So 55, about 55, 774. 
five. What did I say it was? It's so small. The screen. Five, seven. Seven, seven, four. Yeah, 55, 55, 55 flat. So this will be my stop, 50, 55 flat. Okay, and I'll sell all of it if it hits that. And I'll lose like about a thousand bucks if I do that. Okay, just to be safe here while I'm talking to you guys. Okay, so now I've set a stop here. Okay, but it's running up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch this now right with you live. And as this continues up, I'm going to cancel that stop out. Did that take if I took or not? Did it? Yeah, it did. Okay. Be careful there. Order. Yeah, so I said, see down here in the bottom. You see on the bottom part of the list here, I sent set stop loss at 55. So it's running. So I'm down here at about 55 as a stop loss. So can they just like, is it possible that it just like goes and then all of a sudden it just completely crashes? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess anything's possible, but it, like for it to go that far down, you'd have people jumping into this real quick and buying it up. So for it to have like a flash crash, I mean, it's possible, but I, I just don't, you know. So I set a stop loss 55 down here. So I'm already, I'm already up. Like I've already made. So Jody Truitt is asking, please show us how to set stop loss on crypto and Weeble. But Katie uh, said that it's not possible to do stop losses on crypto in Weeble only stocks. Yeah. So I would use Bybit and use our link to get $1,600 for free with your deposits. So that's, I would use Bybit. Go to morninginvest.com slash coin. That's the main exchange that I would recommend. I use that and Binance. All right, so we're seeing a run up here as 57. So I, all right, I was in at 55, but I've already set my stop loss. So what I'm gonna do now, <clears throat> just for S's and giggles, I'm gonna move my stop loss up because I, now I locked in my profits now, because it's already up here, I'm going to move it down. Let's see if it holds there. Okay, look, that. see that green volume is coming in nice. So what I'm going to do, there we go. Come on, come on, little guy. Come on, little candle. This is a one-minute chart, so you can see how much is moving here in one minute. Every time it's, you know, when you're seeing all these green orders over on your screen, these are people buying, and these red orders are people selling. So we just, you know, okay, so it's dropping a little bit here. Yeah, buy bit is where I would go. Um, again, here's and if you sign up for buy bit, you're gonna get um, you're gonna get here's buy bits interface. So morninginvest.com slash coin. Really nice interface. Take it on your app, take it on your Mac, on your PC. It doesn't matter. You can set alerts, price alerts, everything. I really like how simple they've made it. Um, really powerful trading platform. I mean, huge top reviews all around. Um, so I am doing a lot of my new trades over there. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new sub account over there. And what I thought we could do here on the show, actually, on Bybit, is I'll take $100 and I'm going to start a special account just for this show. Or a thousand. No, we'll start with a thousand. We'll, we'll start with a thousand dollars. And I'm going to show you how to take that to tens of thousands of dollars. Sound like an idea? Sounds good to me. So let's do it. We'll do it live on the show. I'll show you the different coins I'm trading, things I'm investing in. If you want to make some money, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on that little bell notification. We'll be doing it here live on the show every morning. So, all right, come on, little doji. Come on, little doge. Somebody else said that before. We'll do it live. Who was that? <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> <laughs> come on, everyone, do it live. I can't read the thing. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly used to be my office mate. His, his office was like three doors down from me. He was an insufferable man. Yeah. I love that on Letterman when 
he basically said you're a goofy you're goofy or something like that <laughs> yeah he's um like he's one of those guys that would walk in like never say hi to anybody you know he's like too important for the world um so I have a, right. a story about him. I was at uh, the Ron Paul event in, I can't remember what state we were in, but we were at a, a uh, like a Coliseum type thing and it was packed with people. And I was in charge of the VIP room, which we didn't allow media in. That's where like John Popper from Blues Traveler and people like that would hang out. Um, mm -hmm. And so I specifically told people, I said, if you see Bill O'Reilly, please tell me because I want to personally kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> but I never, so when I had to go down to the floor, when Ron came out, Bill O'Reilly was up there and I didn't get a chance to kick him out. But what he would do is he would go around and find the worst people he could find, the most drunk people. And those are the people he would interview just to kind of marginalize Ron Paul. Figures. What yeah. Punk. Yeah. Never. All right. Him. So what I just did was I canceled my stop loss because now I've locked in profits. Okay. Now I'm moving it up to 56 cents. Okay. So 1.56. Uh, let's see. I'll move it to one. Eight one five eight 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 one five eight eight. You don't have to be this precise if you don't want. Eight, eight. Oh, okay, that's good. So you don't have to go that much on the decimal side. So fifty six. So it's up here now. It's even moving higher. So fifty six cents. So let me do. And then what you're doing here is you're setting where it's going to stop and then where you're going to limit it to. So fifty six. Steve wants to know what's the difference when you buy from buy from the limit versus the market. Well, you're setting your own limit is like what you're willing to pay is a limit. And then what the market is, is what the market is value is right now. So, you know, if you like you choose, you can have a buy order at a certain limit. So I'm going to sell this at uh, that amount. Okay, I've set a new stop loss now at a higher level. So now I've locked in profits. So you've seen me now, just in the past five minutes, I've locked in, so I bought it here, okay? I bought it here on this breakout, on this green breakout, and I set a stop loss here. It, I made profit, retested a little bit, I made more profit, and now I've set a new stop loss um, at 56 up here. So I've laddered up from here to here, okay? Now it's even going higher. Now this is important. I've lost money where I have not paid attention and I've gone to bed or something. Don't do that. So when you're getting started and learning, when you're starting with like $20 and you're just getting started, sit there. I want you to sit there for an hour and I want you to watch the five minute chart, watch the one minute chart, study how these things move, understand these, these technical patterns. Um, That's what I did wrong. I went to sleep. When I bought Bitcoin, Bitcoin, I should have just watched it 24-7 and not slept. That, now, that, thanks for filling me in on that one. No, I don't mean never sleep. <laughs> but I did see a funny meme on Instagram the other day. <clears throat> it said, it, it, showed a, it showed a husband sleeping soundly next to his wife, and it said before Bitcoin. And then it showed the, the, the other side panel was him like holding a phone with his eyes like red. <laughs> it said after Bitcoin or after crypto. Yeah. Um, but anyway, no, you know, but the point is like, you don't, don't just like invest in something and then just go right to sleep. Like try to do it when you've got a little time to study what's happening with the charts, set your stop losses and watch it for a little bit. You know, you can't just like set it and forget it. We got a super chat here. Um, what platforms can I use my PayPal account to buy and sell stocks? I tried Binance, but it won't accept any of my accounts. Um, Bybit, again, Bybit is awesome. You can be set up in like five, 20... Excuse me, like 25 seconds. I've got the hiccups today. So here's Bybit. Um, these guys are great. Um, go to morninginvest.com slash coin. And when you sign up, when you make your deposit, you're going to get up to $1,600. They will deposit in your account so you can start trading. And it's real cash. It's not like, like fake money. Like they're giving you real money to use. So I'm going to use a Bybit sub account. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set up with a thousand dollars and I'm going to show you how I do my trades and we're going to make some money together. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So look at this already since I did those trades. Now, again, I've locked in profits again already on this. Um, so it's already up to 50, 58 now. So now, so how do so you uh, calculate your profits so far? 
Well, I don't know what percentage. I'm terrible at that, like to tell me how much. But now it's at 58 um, over here on Trading View. So you can see 58 bounce back and forth between you. So it's a little easier to see on the screen. Um, but what I mean is like, I can, I already know I've laddered up, right? So I set a stop loss here was the first one I set. Then I set another one here. And now I'm up here. It's already at 59 folks before the end of this show, we could be hitting like a dollar. So I already made a lot of profits with Doge. I cashed out and then I got back in at this retest and now I'm reinvesting this money back in. So what I'm going to do is now set another stop loss here at 57. So I'm going to go down here, see my orders down here, open orders. So I'm going to cancel this one now. The one I just set a few seconds ago. Okay, that one's canceled now. And now I'm going to set, I always want to set it underneath the most recent uh, retest. So this red candle here, this little red candle, I'm going to set it there. So 57306 is what I'm going to do now. 57306. Uh, let's do 57 flat here. You don't have to be this granular. And it doesn't have to be this nerve wracking. And I'll sell my doge. Confirm it. Boom. So now I've set a new one here. So I've locked in profits from here to here to here. And it's laddering up in here now. We're seeing a little bit of a red retest coming in. But again, this is a one minute chart. So this is this is a crazy Vegas coin, okay? This is not how I usually do it. This is not how I usually do it. Uh, but with this type of a Vegas coin like Dogecoin and all of this crazy news with, you know, Elon Musk tweeting about everything and he says he's going to talk about it this week. I, you know, I, I cannot see this not hitting a dollar by this weekend. I just cannot. I mean, the fact that Mavs owner Mark Cuban, you know, came out and said, we are going to continue to accept. We, we, it's been fantastic for the Mavs organization. They're accepting Dogecoin so you can buy their profits are up hundreds of thousands of dollars at the Dallas Mavericks because Mark Cuban, they're selling da Dallas Mavericks merchandise with Dogecoin. People Even are buying. VMix, VMix, a software that we use for streaming, they're selling it, uh, their software now with Dogecoin. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, I saw like a little video they released with their owner. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Have you thought about like for services, you know, like when you're, you, you know, you're setting up like new studios and stuff. Have you thought about like accepting crypto? Uh, yeah, like I, I do already accept uh, Bitcoin and stuff for any products you get from us, for our, from our merch store, from anything. Wow. Yeah. Because you can do it through Stripe. You can t set up Bitcoin. Sweet. Yeah, look, it's almost about to hit 60 cents. So I've set that new stop loss down here. Uh, so I set it here at uh, 57. And now we're already up to 50, 59 and rising. 59. So I'm probably going to set another stop loss. So not to bore you with all these stop losses, but, um, you know, hope you guys find this. Uh, yeah, 15. Oh, it just hit 60. Dogecoin just hit 60 cents. Folks, look at this. This is a crazy moment. Like this is a crazy, crazy moment in our financial system. Like you're you're witnessing history right now. Um, and I'm not putting too fine a point on it. Like the, up forty six percent. This this coin is worth more than Twitter and Ford. And overnight, I made twenty four thousand dollars on this coin. So That's again. Crazy. Just on this. And I'm already like, since I just made this bet I, with you guys here live, I think I've made an additional 9,000 in the last few minutes. Um, yeah, because it's now at 60 and I bought in at 55. So I'm not good on the math, but that's like something like that. So anyway, that's where we're at. Unbelievable. Any, uh, any good super chats coming in that we want to take? Any questions you guys have on investing, trading? I'll answer any of them. Yeah, so we do have a, a couple of few, uh, super chats. Uh, one is, I can't see the name because the the pinned comment is up there and I can't unpin it. I can't remove it. So oh, somebody that, said, may the fourth be with you. I can't tell who. Um, and then we got Drew of Earth, Eduardo Hernandez, 
new members, welcome. Arjo Ludasaw, uh, when is our country going to start taking care of senior citizens? Most senior citizens in our country have to scratch and scrape to make ends meet. Well, you'd think that when you have senior citizens in the White House, which is what President Biden is, that we would actually see some uh, benefit there uh, to helping people. Um, you know, I think we'll see what this infrastructure package looks like helping seniors. I mean, again, increasing social security. Um, I mean, let's help our veterans too while we're at it. Um, veteran care in this country is awful. We have a military industrial complex, right? 500 or $750 billion a year. And yet we can't, uh, we can't take care of our people. Then we got Jody Truitt. Please show us how to stop loss on crypto on Weeble, please. Um, and I already answered can't. that. Yeah. yeah. So let me just show, I think I kind of showed you, but let me show you on Bybit how to do it. Um, so right here, like here we are on Bybit. Um, over on the right-hand side. Um, you, We're not you seeing just, it. Oh, sorry. Um, you, you just have to set them over here on the right-hand side. Very, very easy to do to set your conditionals. You know, I'm going to limit, I'm going to sell it at this price. When it hits that, it's going to trigger me. And then it's going to sell however much you want to sell hundred percent, 75% of whatever. And you know, the beauty is you can take profits up, up. So you could say, I want to sell 25% here. I want to sell another 25% here. As it keeps going up, I want to sell another 25% here. And if my gosh, it makes it to my final target at hundred percent, then sell that last bit. But you know, very rarely are you going to hit this target. You know, so just scrape. The best thing is like scraping profits all the way up. That's exactly what I'm doing right now with this, with this uh, purchase of Doge right now. Look, it's at 60. It's going up to 61. Um, and I'm going to go back in here and set a stop loss. And they all work very similarly. You know, I'm on Binance on this one here, but you just sell your stop, your limit. Boom, sell it how much you want to sell. Okay. Uh, Frederick Lasort, Super Chat. Uh, Steve Walker, what's the difference? Oh, we did that one already. Uh, Amy, we did that one. Uh, Deanna Zakarowitz, uh, please show what you could do with $100 on sub account. A lot of us are only able to start at $100. Please. All right, well, I'm going to start with 1000 um, I know a lot of people can only start with 100 but let's start with 1000 It doesn't matter how much I start with because we're going to be, you know, you can follow my trades regardless. Like it doesn't matter, you know, it's all, all relative, right? So I've had people like in different trading groups that are literally took $200 and they made uh, $20,000 in a short amount of time. So I'm going to use a thousand because it's just, you know, and, um, and I'm going to show you like the different trades that I'm making. You got to follow me. I'm going to have a, 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 our Telegram uh, channel. You got to follow me on Telegram as well. So you'll get text alerts. Um, so we'll have a link to that in the chat below or in the uh, description today. So make sure you follow on the Telegram channel as well. So I can tell you like things I'm watching, trades I'm making, things I'm, I'm interested in, news that's breaking. But please, folks, you know, get yourself a whiteboard, get yourself a notebook that you can track these things. I know all these fancy things that you have on your screen are really nice technology, but it's always great if you can literally just have a notebook, you know just a little whiteboard that you can keep in your office or your home bedroom or something like that, where you can say, you can put the coin name when you bought it, what you're watching, keeping an eye on it. Um, and, and those types of things. News is also important. Um, when there's news on a particular coin, like we know that these big main net upgrades are coming in the middle of the summer and that some other things are happening shortly. You know, there's going to be a lot of news around that. When that news is public, you know, you want to be selling before that happens in my opinion. Like, that's what I do. So I would like to sell before that. Yes, you need to use a VPN, Darren. So the VPN that I, I use two, but the one that um, we have a link in our description to the VPN, you'll get 30 days free. So you get 30 days free if you go to morninginvest.com slash VPN. I don't know if David can make one of those real quick. I forgot to mention. Yeah, that's that what too. I'm doing real quick for IP Vanish or no, just uh, yeah. Well, that's fine. But morninginvest.com/vpn. We I set up a special link for you guys. Okay, and that would be for what? What's the call to action on that one? Um, to get a, v, a 30 days free. 
Um, Lynn Weigel, thank you for your super chat. Clayton, this is fascinating, but very confusing to someone who's never traded before. Are you going to be showing us how to do this? Yes. Yes, I will. I'm going to put together a series of videos. I've just been um, super busy, but I will try to put together a series of videos that kind of walks you through step by step on how to start trading on Bybit. And I'll kind of walk you through that process. And, you know, you start with like a hundred bucks, start small and start really learning how to do this. And by the way, all of these principles on trading coins works on the stock market. You know, it's a very similar, it's all, it's all trading tactics and, 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 uh, tech, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Technicals, <laughs> technical patterns. You want to be paying attention to that. Um, Edward Carley says, I invested 150 in Doge at 55. Right, he did that along with me. I stopped loss. I said I made $12 profit in 15 minutes. Who needs an hourly wage? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so here's a good book that you should pick up. Go to Kindle or wherever you want to get it. Technical Analysis for Dummies. Um, it's a, it's, and don't let the name scare you. It's a really good technical analysis book that shows you patterns and how to walk through different patterns. Um, you know, very, very easy to, very easy to follow this book and learn about these different technical patterns and see like when to buy, when to sell, um, you know, understanding all of this really, but you know, you'll, you'll be up and running in no time, but I'm going to help you with this, putting together some videos on this exact pattern. So, you know, see like swing trader buys at circles, sells at triangles, so you could like swing all the way up, you know, buys at circles, sells at triangles. That's kind of what I'm doing by setting these stop losses, right? All the way up. Boom, 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 boom. So you can start learning how to do this. Um, don't let it just be for Wall Street people to make money on this. That's why they, all these Wall Street guys like can't stand crypto right now because people are crushing it, you know, and they're like, oh, we're just getting, we're sitting here flat with our, uh, with our boring Exxon stock. Yeah. We got Malona Rose and Lynn Wagel, new members. Uh, Jason Fouts, 24000 as I buy $150 because that's all I can afford. Hey, it's all relative, right? Stephen Burke, Super Chat. Ernest Anderson, new member. Uh, Lynn Wagel, Clayton, this is fascinating but very confusing to someone who has never traded before. Are you going to be showing us how to do this newbie level? Yeah, and that's what I was just saying. I'm gonna I'm gonna put together some videos for you on that exact process and how to kind of get started with Bybit, how to you know make that deposit, start just start trading and start learning those those processes. Amy Perkins, what trading platforms will take my PayPal account to buy and sell stocks? I tried Binance, but it won't accept any of my bank accounts. Yeah, I use Bybit. So again, Bybit. Just go to morninginvest.com/coin and you'll get sixteen hundred dollars just for starting with your deposit. We have a link in the description below. So you should check that out. Uh, and then um, Ernest Anderson, are you using Binance.us or .com? Um, I use .com, the international, and a VPN. So I use Binance and Bybit. Those are the two that I use. DB, new member, welcome. Veronica Luna, super chat. Um, and David Carrillo, to the moon, East Los Angeles. Uh, and Kathy LaCroix, are there any... Uh, are there any coins you can buy and just hold? Don't understand a lot of this, but I'm trying. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Bitcoin is a long-term play. I mean, I think Bitcoin is, as we even heard from the Federal Reserve, is a store of store of value, you know? See, see look at Dogecoin dropping right now. So I just sold, so I had a stop loss set there, so it just sold me out and I made some profits. It sold me out at 57, I believe. So, yeah, 57. So I just made, so in that amount of time, I made uh, a good amount of money on Doge, selling out of Doge. 
Outstanding Entertainment says, I'm with Dogecoin. I don't see profits. I'm with Robinhood. I bought 84 quality, whatever that meant. Uh, I really need to know how to trade. Well, you've come to the right place. Are you a subscriber of the channel, my friend? Subscribe and be here, and I'll show you how to do it live every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Let's make some money. You know, the point of this channel is I want you guys to turn short-term profits, like trading like this, into long-term buy and hold, like real estate. That's the goal. So I hope that you will uh, learn these strategies, you know, because you're going to be taxed a certain way. You want to take these profits. You don't want to throw them away and start buying stuff, crap, you know, cars and stuff like that. That's not a performing asset. I want you to turn these profits into performing assets like real estate. There was a, a super chat from yesterday that came in after we were done, Teresa Monroe, and she asked, Clayton, do you rent to Section 8 recipients and why or why not? I do. We have, we have, we have a lot of Section 8 tenants in, uh, um, in the properties that I own. Um, a lot of the new construction we have right now, no, we don't. Um, I think we might actually in some of our townhomes. I have to check with the team on that. But I own... The rental properties that I personally own, we have a few Section 8 tenants in there. Um, and look, I don't, I don't mind Section 8 at all. You know, it's guaranteed by the government, basically. Um, you're helping someone with housing. They are getting assistance. Um, the only downside I see is that, is that it can take a few months when you, a new Section 8 tenant moves in. It takes about 90 days for the Section 8 payout to arrive. So if you're expecting to like have rent from the Section 8 tenant right away, it won't happen. It usually takes about three months. Um, but they also tend to stay a really long time, the tenants in a Section 8 property. Now, you can get some bad apples, but you can get some bad apples whether they're Section 8 or not. You know, Natalie, my wife, owned a, 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 an apartment in, in San Francisco, and it was rented for like, I don't know, $3,500 a month. This was a A-class neighborhood in the financial district. And these two, like, boyfriend, girlfriend that lived there, or whatever, with their dog, they destroyed the place. I mean, absolutely destroyed the place. And they weren't Section 8. They were like financial advisors or something. I don't know, you know, so you can't paint any kind of... Uh, in fact, I find section... I find... I find Class A properties to be Class A headaches. Um, so I don't, I don't do that. I do like B class and, and, you know, affordable, affordable homes with good tenants in great school districts. So here's a retest moment. Here's a retest moment for Doge. So it bounced down and it, it tripped me out. I sold out of it because it hit my stop loss. So I made some good profits on this little run up here, but now look what's happening again. Um, you know, it's like, is this another re-entry point <clears throat> to get back in as this runs up? So you're seeing this flag pattern emerge here. Not sure how to convert dollar to coin using both Bybit and Binance through my VPN in London. Not sure how to convert dollars to coins, both Bybit and Binance through my VPN in London. So, Stephen, one thing you could do is... Um, uh, hold on. Cindy girl says, what's the average price for a VPN? Well, if you use our link, it's free for 30 days. And I think it's like, I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something like that. Um, it's, it's, it's really inexpensive to be able to make great money like this. And plus it's also about safety for your cybersecurity. Um, so Steven's question from London, um, with Bybit, you should be able to easily, um, if you go to morninginvest.com slash coin, like you should be able to pretty easily go into the buy section and add money from your account. You can link your account as well in Bybit. You can also, um, you can, I think you, you can use your credit card as well um, to, to, link your, to link your account there as well to get money in. Another way you can do it, Stephen, is if like you have a Coinbase account. I do not trade on Coinbase. Coinbase's fees are way too expensive. So I don't if that's up to you. If you want to spend money on trading on Coinbase, I don't think that that's the way to go. So I only use Coinbase to get money into the system. So I might put like $1,000 into Coinbase and then I buy USDC, which is their coin, Coinbase's own coin. And it's a one for one dollar to dollar thing. Stable coin. Okay. Then I take that and I just send it to my Bybit account. 
transfer USDC to my Bybit account. So that's one way to do it, Stephen. Franklin's Valentine over on Twitter says Doge is going to hit $1 by Saturday. I don't know what the new support level will be. I don't know. I think you're going to, if it hits $1, you're going to just see so many people taking profits. <laughs> so I would, here's my advice. I would definitely be selling before it hits a dollar. That's what I plan to do. I'm not going to wait around to see the bloodbath that happens after it hits a dollar. Uh, does it drop back down to 10 cents, 5 cents? Does it hold? I don't know. But um, I personally, like if, if I'm seeing it hit a dollar or almost hitting a dollar, I'm selling it like 95 cents. I am not going to ride this thing to the top. That's my opinion. You, Everyone has their own risk tolerance, but I'll watch it hit a dollar, but I'm not going to have my money tied to it. That's all the super chats we have. Okay. Oh, we just got a new one. How do you how do you how do you get access to Binance uh, International? I've um, been waiting to get verified on Binance US for over a month. Yeah, it's a, it takes a long time. So what I would say is that's that's one of my frustrations with Binance. That's why I've really trying to transfer a lot of my stuff over to Bybit. So again, just go to morninginvest.com slash coin and you can be set up in like 25 seconds. Literally, it's really, really fast to go to buy a bit and get set up. So go to morninginvest.com and you'll get the $1,600 rewards also for grabs. Um, if you use that. Check out Joby Aviation ticker symbol RTP. Joby Aviation. check on ethereum here we haven't been paying so much attention to doge today that i've been like what's going on with ethereum here's bitcoin at 55 just hanging out ethereum 34 jeez louise someone else was asking like what's a good long-term hold coin you know in my opinion i'm holding ethereum and bitcoin to me uh you know you might also consider some of these other uh, larger like cardano um and ada um, these are, you remember Cardano, you think about some of these bigger platforms on which other people are building platforms on, you know, on top of. So, you know, this is what you need to do is, is, is look at what's being built on these things um, and the amount of upside. So see like Ethereum and, you know, all the news and stuff that's coming out about Ethereum. Look at the technical pattern now on Ethereum, where this thing is going to be running to. I mean, whew. look at this. Ethereum skyrocketing here. And this is a long position. See up here on the top? You know, this is a long position. So I, you know, you could take short-term positions, but I would say, I, you know, I think this is going over 5,000 and it's on its way up to, there are expectations. I, I saw some guys uh, saying they think that this could hit 25,000 by, by Halloween. Um, so again, just be smart with it. You know, you don't have to be scared about it. If you get into the coin, set your stop losses. So you protect yourself. Just set a stop loss under the most recent resistance pattern. Uh, and then you'll, you know, you lock in these profits on the way up and then monitor it. And what I like to do is what I did today is I like to go through and scrape them out. So as I'm going up on a coin, I'll scrape out profits. So let's say I bought in here, right? Let's say I bought in down here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Sorry. Boom. Uh, um, where's my brushes? There we go. So, so let's say I bought in here which is like somebody who's just watching just bought in right here. And those colors are terrible. Can you even see that? Yeah, it's give you small, but here. Okay. It's a little bit better. Okay. So let's say I bought in this little happy face here. Okay. 
This is at 55 cents. So someone just watching on our show live now just bought in at 55, right? So I'd set a stop loss like right in this range because it was, that's a, you know, so I bought in, let's say I bought in right here, which is like where I bought in just a few minutes ago. I'm going to set a stop loss right here under this red. So I'm not going to lose too much. I don't lose a few, few dollars if it drops, but not, not much, right? But then, that's right, Grover. But then as this is going up, <clears throat> And it continues up. I'm going to set stop losses here. And I'm going to cancel this one. Now you can set multiple stop losses in case it goes too fast. Because sometimes with these highly volatile coins, like this thing will just like drop like this candle over here. And if you, you know, if you had a stop loss set in here, which I did, it triggered. But sometimes it'll go so fast that it'll shoot down like this, that it'll blow right past your stop loss because there's, it's just happening so fast that there is no buyers that are able to jump on your order that quickly. So you might want to set, you know, s multiple stop losses to protect yourself. But then scrape your profits on the way up. So maybe take 25% profits here, 50% profits here, continues up, you know, stop yourself out. But look where this is going now. I mean, this is heading back... Um, this might be a good retest moment. If anyone wants to get into Dogecoin, keep your eye on this pattern. So it's down to 53. It's dropping. Look at this plummeting. <laughs> I'm glad I got out when I did. Look at this. This is live Doge. Hit 60. See if the bulls can come in. It's a lot of bears that just showed up to sell out, make some profits. Let's see if the bears come back or the bulls come back in, you know, the, again, this is a one minute chart. So this is kind of crazy to be watching this, but gives you a sense of what's happening. Um, and then, you know, like if I, if I spin this out, you know, you can get crazy on a one minute chart because if I go to like a four hour chart, this is what it looks like. It's not that bad, right? Oh, I got a little down here, but overall, like look at this green, it's still pumping high. Like the overall volume is still good here on a four hour chart. Like this could be a nice parabolic upswing here. So you can't get too caught up in these like little tiny one minute charts. Don't do that to yourself. You know, James is asking, can you take out um, uh, some profits every month to cover investing expenses? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, well, I don't know about expenses. Like what expenses do you have for investing, right? your computer, your internet, I, I guess, I mean, what I would do is just make sure that, I mean, every time you're making profits, you got to track everything because you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're reporting all of this to the IRS, you know, crypto trading is just like stock trading. Like anytime you're making profits, that's a small, and an overall profit and loss, you got to make sure that, you know, did you profit? You got to pay, pro, you know, you got to pay taxes on that profit. So just want to, if you if you cash out, you know. So now it's starting to climb back up again. I almost I almost missed the show today because I was like I was sitting there watching these charts so close <laughs> before the show today. I was like <laughs> I was like I jumped in on Doge and I I made some profits and I sold out of it and then I was like all right I got to do the show. So and then we did our live trade here on the show. If you guys want. Um, you know, if you're joined us late here, you want to go back, um, we'll have a chapter marker so you can go back in late later today and watch how we did that trade. Um, when I bought into Dogecoin and I made a few thousand dollars within a few minutes, um, I bought in with, uh, my profits, I bought in with 24,000 and, uh, made some nice profits on that in a few minutes. So you can do it too. There's no reason you can't. If a guy like me can do it, anybody can do it. Any other super chats or anything before we go? Nope. We, we did them all. Good, good. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you found this instructive and helpful. Um, and we'll do it again tomorrow. How about that? 9 a.m. Eastern time. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Much love to all of you. And we'll see you back here bright and early at 9 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Oh, by the way, tonight we'll have our video on gold. Mark Lichtenfeld is going to be joining us for an interview. So don't miss that. He is a uh, big-time investor with the Oxford Club, like no joke, okay? He's going to be joining us tonight to talk gold investing and where he sees gold going right now. Um, $2,000 an ounce. Since we've been on the air, it's already up another, it's already jumped up again. 
as a store of value with this inflation running hot. Protect your assets. Protect your money, folks. Pay attention as we teach you financial education here on the show. Peace out, everyone. Have a great afternoon.